everyone, how are we all? I hope you are all well. Welcome back to another video and today I thought I would share the makeup look that I was wearing in this Instagram post. Um, I had a couple of messages asking what eyeshadow that I was wearing and lots of you were very complimentary. Thank you for that. That was very, very kind of you. I had a last minute like outfit panic and I really do believe that like an all black outfit can solve any panic you have in. I felt great in that outfit. Oh, I just will forever love black. <laughs> but it was for a friend's 30th birthday. We had a great time. Gin and lemonade. What a combo, guys. There you go. That's the takeaway tip from this video. Um, and I feel like this is the year of all of my friends basically turning 30. There's gonna be quite a few parties coming up. We've got a few weddings booked in already. And whenever these occasions crop up, like I'm someone who doesn't wear an absolute shed load of makeup day to day, but I do enjoy from time to time just like taking it up a notch, taking it to the next level and I'm still not 100% sure what to call this video but it's sort of like a glam, in inverted commas, uh, makeup look for minimal beauty makeup lovers. Something like that. I'm sure there's like a snappier title in that somewhere but this is just the look that I do, some suggestions that I have for if you're like me, you like the kind of glossier, like dewy skin, like mid-tone brown on the eye look, but you want to take it to the next level because you've got an event coming up, this is what I would suggest. And it's a recreation of that look. Um, so I will be sharing my tips along the way, doing the whole thing on my face. So let's get started. Just got a bit of lip balm. This is the Pat McGrath one. I'm just putting it on my lips to prep them because I'm going to use quite a matte product later on. It's it's a nub. Like, I absolutely love that stuff. It is the bougiest lip balm ever, but I love it. <laughs> then I'm going to prime my skin. I've got the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Hydrating Primer. I worked with them recently on this launch, and it's just a really lovely primer. And I'd say if you're doing kind of an evening look and you really want to keep that glow in your skin whilst using something perhaps a little bit more full coverage than you used to, it's a really nice idea to use some sort of hydrating base underneath. And this, this is just so nice. I've been using it a ton. I really love the Ulla Henriksen one as well. I also love the VDL Lumilayer primer, Becca First Light, Smashbox primerizer. There you go. All of my, all of my recommendations there bundled into one. My skin this month is being very well behaved. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I think there's a few products in my routine that I've been using that have really been helping to like keep my radiance there and keep any like angry issues at bay. So keep an eye out for my September favorites because I will share those products in there for you. Um, so I'm not gonna go too crazy with foundation. It's the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This is in the shade four. I'm just gonna take one pump of that and sort of take that over my cheeks and my nose, which is where I need the most coverage. And I'm gonna blend that in with a brush. I've also been, I mean, let's let's not lie, I've also been using the old uh, fake tan quite a lot, which I feel always evens things out on my face and means that I get to use less product. The Isle of Paradise drops in medium are perfection. But if you normally wear quite a sheer, more like a tinted moisturizer base, my suggestion here would be go for something that's more like a medium buildable coverage and then you can just build it up. Less is more, always start with less. You can always add any more foundation if you need it. You can add concealer if you need it, um, but just start with a little and then you can always work it up if you need it to. Also like a blender brush. This is a very expensive Westman Atelier brush, but it's so, so, so similar to the Zoeva 104 brush. And I find that these types of brushes are so nice for really pushing it into your skin, like forcing it to be at one with your skin, you know, so you don't get any of that pigment sort of landing and sitting on the top of your face. If you normally use quite a light, really like dewy textured concealer, then that's great. You can always go ahead and use that. You can always powder it down if you need to. But I tend to use something that's just got still that very skin-like, smooth, like lovely blendable finish, but something with a tad more coverage. The Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer is just so, so good for that. So I'm gonna use three under my eyes. It's the only flaw with the packaging, you find it really hard. <laughs> to open it, especially if I've like got primer still on my hands. So I'm just using three under my eyes as it's a little bit more brightening. Come on, where are you? Ah, there you are. And then I'm gonna take four, which is a tad deeper, like around my nose and on the edge of my nose where I've got 
any redness or any blemishes that I want to cover. That on, hello friend. A little bit on my chin. The heavens have opened outside. I am so happy I do not need to leave the house today. I might just use the Case Jane Hughes trick of blending it in with the Zoeva 134 Luxe Powder Fusion Brush. Or use your fingers just to get that final smush. If you feel like you've brightened a little bit too much under your eyes and you've gone a bit like Kim Kardashian 2007 territory, then you can always take your foundation brush and just push that over the top to make sure there's not as much contrast underneath. And um, all these extra prep steps when it comes to skin, I basically do because I don't want to use powder because I just feel like powder on me looks quite like aging and it can make me look quite dry and crepey and not as like healthy and like buoyant as I would like my complexion to look. So I'm leaving it there. My complexion is still really dewy, really glowy, but I've used more long lasting formulas. So that is good. Like, especially if you've got like an evening thing, it's gonna last pretty well on your skin. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is contour. And I really, really love the Westman Atelier contour stick. That's what I've been using day to day. But I'm gonna use a mixture of creams and powders on the cheeks right now, um, just to get that longevity slash glow like ratio just right so i'm using the kevin aquan contour powder this is in the shade medium i'm just going to take that under my non-existent cheekbone and blend that in oh cheekbone where are you oh and under my chin as well because i'm slowly turning into my dad sorry dad i love you but you get me the trick here is to sort of semi blend it out like put it all together with a bronzer and this is the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil bronzer. It is old, um, but I've hit pan. I'm just trying really hard to like use beauty products up at the moment. I'm actually doing, I'm doing quite a good job. I've got a load of empties to share, uh, but I don't know where, where's the best place to put them? An IGTV, here, Instagram stories, I don't know. Let me know where you would like to see them. Um, there's a lot of things I've gone through that I've like repurchased already or like, wouldn't like. Let me know if you wanna hear my thoughts. So with this bronzer, I'm just marrying everything together, adding a nice amount of warmth to the face. If you're a real minimal, minimal makeup girl or guy, um, then you could completely skip that contour stage. It's just because I have such a round face <laughs> that I quite like to do it if I'm doing more of a glam look. But you could just go in and do a similar thing with bronzer, if you fancy. I am gonna use the tiniest, tiniest amount of blush. This is the Milk Makeup, uh, the work, I think it's called Lip and Cheek. I'm taking a tiny amount of that, real small, on my fingers and then I'm gonna smush it between my fingers, put it on my face and just use it really, really like here. The lightest amount of tint. But I do feel like it, it does like help to make things look a little bit fresher. And I also don't wear crazy amounts of color like on my face in terms of bronzer and all that kind of stuff. I think it helps to finish it off. Uh, but we're entering the cream stage of the cheeks. Um, and normally it'd be like a bit of a no-no to do kind of like powder and then put creams or liquids on top. But I feel like actually these creams work really well. They're not sticky, they're not too powdery. They're like somewhere in the middle and I feel like they layer really nicely over these powders. And it is using a powder and then using a cream and kind of combining the two, you get that really fresh look but you get longevity as well in your base. And I just can't really bear the thought of wearing powder highlighters right now. It's really like not my thing. It hasn't been my thing for a while. Uh, this is the Beauty Blender Glass Glow Shine Lighter. New product alert. Bought this off of Cult Beauty. Um, I think Katie Jane Hughes had used it and also like the name Glass Glow, like, hello, I'm interested. It is a clear balm and it is really nice really really nice mark's taken a couple of photos of me where my highlight has been like popping and my highlight is never popping and i'm like what have i got on my cheeks and it is this like look at that look at that it really does that whole semi sweaty glow thing really nice like you have to be quite careful with it it's not something i would put like all over my face but just in that cheek area it really sticks around as well i'm really really enjoying it and again a really good product to use if you're into minimal subtle looks because it has no color no pigment in it at all no detectable shimmer in it at all it really is just like a gloss basically it's like a face gloss you can use it on your lips eyes cheeks wherever you want um i really 
really, really, really like it because I think you get like kind of maximum impact, but like minimal product, which is, I'm all, I'm all about that. I'm just gonna quickly sort out my brows and I'm using the Milk Makeup Kush Clear Brow Gel and I'm just like putting everything into place. Um, my brow lady is currently on holiday, but I saw her before she went and I think we've got like a good, a good shape going on. Uh, but she has told me I am not allowed to pluck any like round the front. We're still sort of refining this area and this area, um, but we're getting there. I feel like the brows, like when did I start this whole brow thing? I feel like March, April time. I mean, yeah, uh, quite a while ago, but we're really, we're getting there. I'm so happy with them, like really, really chuffed. Um, but we are missing like one brow, uh, one brow hair here. And so I'm gonna use the Glossier Brow Flip um, let me get a little mirror actually. So I'll put it in the right spot. Ooh, oh my gosh, oh my word. Oh, that could have been dangerous. So just touching it, barely on the skin at all, just to fill in that gap. There you go. Cool. Brows done. Right, let's have a chat about kind of where you take it from here. Um, so I would either go like one of two directions. I would either do something very, very minimal on the eye, like perhaps mascara with like a tiny bit of like a matte mid brown shade like all over the lid or like mascara with a bit of a subtle eyeliner look um, and then a bold lip like something really fun on the lip like a pink lip or like a red lip into that or if I want to look more glam in inverted commas um, I tend to do more of an eye. I personally feel more comfortable with like a bit more of an eye and then like a natural lip um, especially if I'm going somewhere where I'm going to be eating and drinking I don't need to worry about like chatting to someone and having lipstick on my teeth or all over my face or anything like that. Um, I, yeah I just tend to get lipstick everywhere. It's just, it's covering everyone around me. Um, so I would always prefer to do an eye look over a lip look. Well, sometimes, you know, sometimes the mood takes me elsewhere. Um, I'm just going to prime my eyes. This is the NARS eyeshadow primer that I always use. But I thought I would show you my go-to kind of as out there eye makeup as I kind of like, the, the top level that I reach when it comes to eye makeup and all I'm using is two eyeshadows, one matte, one super shimmery and then a brown pencil eyeliner. That's it. Three products, I feel like you get real like, kapow, look at that. Looks like you've made an effort but looks very groomed, very polished and is still like a comfortable place for me and um, I don't feel like I'm like wearing too much. I'm gonna zoom you in, I'm gonna zoom you in. So this is the bit that requires a little bit of patience and what I'm basically gonna do is create like a base color all over the eyes, blend it out, get that real like diffused look on the eyelid. And I'm gonna use this Dose of Colors Sassy Sienna's palette and I'm gonna use this central color here, which is very, very similar to Anastasia Beverly Hills Caramel if you've got that. Also, what's the other one? Mac Sable, again, very similar. I'm going to use it on the Zoeva 228 Luxe Crease Brush. This is like a mini one that I got as part of a travel set. And it's what I used the other day. Oh, lovely. It might seem like an odd choice to build up colour, but I just think you get a really nice diffused look very quickly on the lid. So this might take a while. In insert time lapse. distributed quite evenly over both of the eyes so I'm just taking a MAC 224 brush this is like much bigger much fluffier um, just to make sure it is truly blended out at the edges because this is like the last time we play around with this lower color you could use whatever color you wanted whatever finish you want but it is just the idea of bringing it up quite high on the eyes and getting a really nice like blended, oh, this eyeshadow, this is just here all the time kind of look, like making it look really natural, whatever you're using. I do love an orange though. I just think it's like the best neutral bold that there is. So I'm doing so, so much of this, like am I at school? Like am I year six, what am I doing? So when I was doing my makeup the other day for my friend's party, I got to this point and I was like, 
I think I'm just going to throw some mascara on. I'm just going to throw some mascara on and leave it there. And then I was like, no, you know what? I want to take this to the next level. I want to be glam. My friend's 30. This only happens once. So I am going to take it to the next level. And I use this product. This is an Hourglass Scattered Light Glitter Eyeshadow. This is in the shade Rapture. Um, I bought all of these quite recently for like a new in beauty test video try on. I'll link that video up there in the corner for you. I really like this product. I'd say if you're going to treat yourself to like one thing in this video or you're quite a beginner with makeup or you like really simple makeup but you just want that one product that can really like, I'm not going to say turn it up a notch again, dial it up. There you go. Similar. Wow. My vocabulary is so good. But this product is insane. It's beautiful. I think they do it in around eight to ten shades now, different colours, a lot of them very neutral, um, but just all of them fun. So they're just, they're just fun. They're a brilliant, brilliant product. They're so easy to use as well. You can use them on their own if that's what you fancy, um, but I personally like to put more of like a base colour down so that I've got that like matte blend and then this on top, this brings the shimmer. I don't need to worry about blending it too much. Um, I find sometimes with eyeshadow, I like, look back in the mirror and I'm like, wow, it's disappearing already. That's just me and my hungry eyelids. So if you feel like you just want to go over again, pat in a little bit more pigment, great. Um, but now is the time. Um, this is a brilliant shade to go with this because it's obviously very ready. It completely transforms it. Um, and I wasn't crazy about it when I first put it on because it does have a bit more of like a metallic silver shift to it rather than a gold. Um, but it's fun. It's, it's just brilliant. Yeah, I really loved the end look when I'd like put everything together. So basically just taking that on my finger and then just pressing that all over my eyes. And it makes it look like I'm wearing a gloss on my lids super metallic, super sheeny, and then you've got that blend so you don't need to worry about doing any more basically aside from just pushing this on with your finger. They're so fun to press your finger in, like this packed down like creamy formula almost, like oh I just want to stick my finger in it. <laughs> Whoa, that's what she said. <laughs> look at that, look at that. Oh, I love it. I love, 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 love this product. Feel free to just like blend at the edges if you feel like it needs it. But it doesn't really. And then I just like to take my foundation brush and just go underneath to clean up sort of any fallout. Although to be fair, I can count maybe like five specks of glitter on my face and the fallout is so minimal. Honestly, this product, amazing. So to finish it off on the eye, I did use an eyeliner. Um, I actually used the Glossier Play uh, Disaster Class eyeliner, but today I'm gonna use the shade Brack, which is like a black-brown mix, very clever. The reason I'm not gonna use Disaster Class is that it's a very plummy, like it looks more brown on camera, but in real life, like once that is blended out, it goes purple, um, which is kind of cool, like purple and orange, it's a contrasting colour mix, um, it looks really cool, um, I feel like it looked a little bit more editorial than what I would have liked it to, um, so today I'm going to use Brack and yeah, just use like a brown. And what I do with eyeliner, because I don't like to use it all over my eye from like inner to outer, I feel like it can really close up my eye. I just use it more on this outer section here. I open up my lid so I'm like looking direct and then I just take the tiniest amount in like a baby flick. Baby, baby, baby. Okay, that's not a baby flick, oh dear. It's gone, it always goes bigger, it's like that. It's like that little meme where it like starts tiny and you end up with just like eyeliner all over your lid. Um, but what I do like to do is to take a flat smudgy brush and just smudge it in a little. Now it's got concealer on, oops. Just so you get that definition, you get that like slight mini baby wing, that beefing up of the lash line, um, but without it taking like 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes lol, no it would take me like half an hour. So I've just put on a shed load of the Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill Wet Mascara. It's so good, this mascara is amazing. I feel like, like it, it kind of gives like a very false lash effect like with a couple of layers like look at those look at those but that's the finished eye makeup look um hopefully you can see that it is so easy requires like no skill like i do not have mad eyeshadow skills at all um, of course you could go on the bottom lash line you could take that brown on the bottom lash line you could do mascara on the bottom lash line you could do eyeliner for me that 
always makes me feel like oh too much too much and I just like want to wipe it off and start again so I've literally filmed this video before and done that and then watched it back and been like terrible mistake terrible mistake so for me and how I feel comfort wise with makeup oh my god beauty parcels coming today oh that's another thing foundation wise I have got so many foundations and I am testing them all for a week and um, I will feed back with my thoughts at some point in October. So all the new foundation launches, my thoughts on them will be coming very soon to you. Anyway, where was I? Wow, eyeshadow, yeah. For me, that's where I like wanna leave it, that's what I feel comfortable with, um, but I just, I love it. I love, I love, love, love the hourglass. Like I keep looking down just so you, can you see it? Can you see it? Ah, love, 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 such a brilliant, brilliant product. Uh, finally, on to lips. I'm actually gonna line them. It's a good way of like feeling a little bit more glam if you don't usually. It's the NARS Precision Lip Liner in the shade Halong Bay. Just a nude liner. I never line my lips, so when I do, I'm like, oh, hello, hello, lower lip line, you're there. I had the Makeup Forever, what's it, like the 3C, the one that Alana loves, um, and it's down the back of the radiator, so the day that I get that out will be very exciting. The good thing with a nude liner is you can be like a little bit sloppy, and no one even knows. And then I'm just taking the Laura Mercier, this is the Velour Extreme Matte Lipstick in the shade Irresistible. Brilliant, really, really like this. Um, it's from the Parisian Nudes launch. Check it out, the Parisian Nudes launch is so nice. It's a nude, like, wow. It's taking me back to like my Mac myth days. Um, I'm just gonna blot that down. And actually, I'm gonna mix a little bit of the NARS Raw Seduction lipstick. This is from the new, like, revamped lipstick line, just to give it a little bit more pink. Just pushing that back. I never like to look like I'm wearing too much lip color unless it is like a red or a pink or something bright. I just think that keeps it in like the minimal makeup zone. What I was trying to say is it does bring it together just to have a little bit on the lips. Um, but yeah, like I said, nude lip, slightly bold-ish eye is a uh, my fave. So that is the finished look. I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I know it is kind of the use, but I, I used a glitter eyeshadow. <laughs> Everything that I've used will be linked down below for you and I will be back very soon with a brand new video. I've got some fashion content coming and I've also got some like travel content coming because next weekend, I don't know when this video is going up, basically soon we're going to Lisbon and Mallorca so that is coming for you very soon. We're going to be vlogging and so yeah, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye!